706 Nashville's Morning News on Super Talk 997 WTN. Thank you for joining us. I want to welcome on into the program Dakota Wood from the Heritage Foundation, our military analyst in Dakota. Big uh, news militarily. Uh, Joe Biden torches the Houthis, and so we're going to talk a little bit about this. You and I have been uh, speaking about the uh, Iranian-backed Houthis for a long time. And so just mm-hmm. a couple of real quick questions uh, that I know that folks will have as they wake up this morning and, and hear this news. Uh, the Houthi rebels, they are, I mean, a terrorist organization. I would say the Biden administration has not uh, designated them as a foreign terror organization. Uh, Trump actually did, and then Biden took that away. But uh, that being said, we attacked them because they were going after vessels and military ships uh, in the Red Sea, not only owned by America, but also by uh, nations across the world. And they were threatening the waterway. Yeah, the Red Sea is that water area between Egypt and Saudi Arabia and extends through the uh, Bab al-Mandeb Strait into the Gulf of Aden and then the larger you know, Indian Ocean and Arabian Sea area. Major waterways, something like 15 or 17 percent of all international shipping goes through that area. So container ships and liquid natural gas and petroleum products and cars and everything else. So it goes through the Suez Canal that connects the Mediterranean and the uh, Indian Ocean. And these rebels have conducted 27 attacks since October 7th, when Hamas attacked Israel, um, for a variety of reasons. You know, they're minions of, um, or useful stooges of Iran. They have their own agenda in the country of Yemen. And then they're also doing these things supposedly to support their Muslim brothers in this fight against Israel. So they've been attacking with drones, Uh, 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 Helicopter-delivered military forces to seize uh, some of these ships and uh, uh, ballistic missiles that can target ships as well as cruise missiles and other things. All this stuff comes from Iran. But they've been playing havoc to the extent that insurance rates have really gone up and the major shipping companies have redirected traffic around the continent of Africa, which adds two to three weeks of sail time, more fuel, makes stuff more expensive. And so it just got to the point where this has to stop, you know, them firing at, at international ships as well as U.S. military vessels. And so last night, uh, President Biden authorized a strike that had actually been discussed as early as early December. Yep. Uh, so all the month of December into January, and it was a massive strike. It was uh, over 100 precision weapons, meaning cruise missiles and guided bombs and whatnot, delivered against 60 targets at 16 different locations. And the uh, Brits uh, had uh, four aircraft, I believe, that hit a number of targets at two different locations. And these are logistics nodes and air defense, the support bases for these drones, uh, both sea and air, and uh, air defense installations. So it's a message that should have been delivered a month ago. Uh, But finally, and the scope and scale, I think, was, was really on target. Uh, five killed, six injured. So then a couple of questions. Number one, will this actually decimate the Houthis? That's number one. And number two, they're vowing some sort of revenge. Uh, can they do any damage to us or our allies uh, in the Middle East? Yes. Yeah, so the, the attack occurred at 2.30 in the morning. So it was meant to minimize, you know, casualties, human life. Right. So that says something about our values. Decimate their ability? Absolutely not. Uh, whether that it puts them back in their corner uh, or invites some kind of a, a huge attack in other ways, we just have to see. Because if they don't do anything, then it makes them look like they're weak and that the U.S. you know, punched them in the nose and that they don't have any ability to respond. And so for their own pride, ego, prestige in the region, you know, all the things that go along with being humans – Uh, They probably are going to try to do something, and everybody is just going to hold their breath to see what that is, right? Are they more missiles delivered toward Israel? Does Iran decide to take independent action, maybe up in the Persian Gulf, you know, just shifting operations? And and it's really a question that can't be answered before we see what their response actually is, if that makes sense. It it does make sense. And um, Dakota Wood joining us from the Heritage Foundation. Let's talk about Iran, because 
they are the ones that are funding the Houthi rebels. We we never really quite know what Iran's going to do. And Joe Biden has been looking the other way on Iranian sanctions, and that has, of course, emboldened Iran and helped to fund the Houthis and so forth. Do you think at this point it is sort of hypocritical or inconsistent of the Biden administration to, on the one hand, bomb the Houthis, but on the other hand, not yet designate or redesignate them as a foreign yeah. terrorist organization? Yeah, well, you know, we've used the word terrorist uh, so loosely over the years. It used to be some political group that was going to use violence to achieve political ends. And now anybody that does anything uh, is going to be labeled a terrorist, you know. So how do how do we differentiate terrorism or terrorist organization from a military force? You know, is it government sanctioned or not? So I'm not avoiding the question. I'm just saying this this designation has become a political tool. The Houthi started as a religious movement in Yemen, uh, started becoming uh, more vocal in its opposition to the Yemeni government, started to arm up uh, uh, Shia uh, in origin, got the backing of Iran, and then a civil war broke out in Yemen. So they have been very successful in beating back the Yemeni government. The Yemeni government is Sunni and got the backing of Saudi Arabia. So it was kind of a proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Yemen. Now that the Houthis have gotten involved in attacking Israel and shipping, um, are they a terrorist group? I mean, are they trying to achieve a political end through violence with respect to U.S. interests? And I, I really don't know how to answer that aspect to it. But I think the designation, whether we designate them or not, indicates how we view these sorts of groups that use military force to intimidate, coerce, you know, grab, capture, hold hostage – you know, things that a normal military wouldn't wouldn't be involved in. Right. Yep. And so I think the Biden administration really has to be more clear about how to view the Houthis because of the legal frameworks that authorized U.S. military force against them. Dakota Wood joining us from the Heritage Foundation on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. So, Dakota, I just I just laid out, you know, some of the mm-hmm. timeline as it relates to the planning of this attack. And you know, the big uh, conversation controversy of Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, uh, prostate cancer, didn't tell the president, didn't tell the president that he was in the hospital, then had to go to the hospital again. Nobody knew. And so as all of this is going on, Lloyd Austin was in the hospital. And, and I mean, obviously, I think this attack went well, but that does add a little a wrinkle to all of that. I mean, what's your perspective on on that? Well, it's another bit of evidence, another proof that things happen that you really can't predict, right? So when Lloyd Austin's wanting to protect his privacy and he makes this dramatic misjudgment about keeping everybody informed, you know, there was some expectation, I guess, on his part that either nothing bad would happen while he's under treatment and nobody knows where he's at, or that if something did happen, uh, his closest advisors would know where he's at and they'd be able to reach him, right? But but those are some bets, you know, to be making, right? So it's, you know, another attack against Israel could have happened. China could have moved on to Taiwan. I mean, who knows? You know, the Israelis execute a strike in secrecy um, against Iran. And, and it just, it points out the importance of key members of the government setting aside their personal privacy sorts of interests and making sure that those who need to know actually know about their their status. So I think it's just a historical proof that it was a misjudgment on his part. The fact that the whole machine, you know, the Pentagon and everything else was working is good, and that's the way it's supposed to be, but it's it's a cautionary note, right? So I think that is how we should uh, treat treat the Austin matter in this instance. Uh, As far as the waterways go, now Mm -hmm. that Biden has done what he's done, waterways now going to be safe do you think everything's going to go back to normal or you think well, the problem yeah is going i think to continue? people will be holding their breath you know because even though the big shepherds were rerouting the fact that there were still ships moving through those waters uh, indicates that that some companies you know can't afford the additional expense or are willing to take the chance or whatever so we'll have to see how the houthis respond to that and how iran responds to that you know we'll have forces on scene uh, you had talked about uh, the deliberations and why there was a delay from January 1st until now, and to get approvals in place 
to conduct a military operation like this is very, very complicated. You know, are you flying through somebody else's airspace? What is the range that the aircraft have to fly, and do they need tanker support, you know, aerial refueling along the way? The fact that Bahrain uh, allowed itself to be mentioned, agreed to that, is a huge thing, because if they are now officially involved, how does that put them with respect to Iran, which yep. is just across you know, the Persian Gulf from them? So you have to get everybody to agree to do things, get permissions to take off and land at airfields from a host country who may not want to be involved in offensive operations, right? And all of those things have to be brought together. And then the details of the timing and who's going to do what, where, and when, that all has to be worked out. And it just takes time to, to get all that stuff in place. Dakota Wood from the Heritage Foundation, always great to have you on and uh, have a great weekend. And we'll look forward to talk too, to you, talking to you again soon. It is a 719. 719-